Tanushri, yeah, one by one. Uh, Nitya, one minute. Tanushri, I will send the recording uh, like most probably tonight. If uh, unless there is some problem with the audio or anything, I will send it today itself. Okay, but only if sometimes there may be problem because it is software thing, right? You know how, how much ever we be careful. There will be sometimes when something will not get recorded or something will be a problem. It might happen sometimes. So if that is not the case, then I will send it today also. Science and maths, both recordings, I'll send it before tonight. Yeah. 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 Nitya? Yes, yes. You will be able to go through the recording. I had recorded the class today. Yeah. Yeah, Nitya, go ahead. Tell me. Yes, I will do that. Okay. Okay, and uh, see, since I have one more thing I want to tell you very clearly. I have given you this facility that I will record the class and I will send it to you. But don't take it like a thing that, okay, I will not attend the class and I will just see the recording. Don't be in that kind of uh, mentality, okay? This will not help you. Only reason I'm recording these classes because no matter how careful you are, after attending the class, you will not remember 100% of the things, whatever I said. Or even in the class, you may not be very clear what I said something. So when you go back to the recording, hear it a few times, what sir was saying, then it will become more and more clear and you can ask me questions based on that in the next class. So that is the reason for giving you the recording. Don't take it like an alternate of the class. No, it's not that. Okay, fine. So we will start with Nitya's question. Nitya said uh, she wants to draw the electronic configuration of calcium, right, Nitya? Okay. Fine. So, calcium, what is the atomic number? 19 or 20, what is it? Okay, let's see. Okay, I'm getting 20. How I do is I count it. Her hey, Lee, Weber, Ka, Na, Ofa, Ne, Na, Mag, Pal, Si, Versa, Kla, Ar, Ka, Ka. So here I have 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. That's what I'm counting. So to, is it 19? Okay, maybe I made a mistake in counting. 20, okay. Yeah, okay. So... Remember all the atomic numbers up to 30. That is something you need to. Calcium is 20. Fine. So if you want to draw the electronic configuration of 20, in the first shell, K, L, M, N, let's say. Okay. So in the first shell, you'll have two electrons maximum it can take two correct then in the next one you will put eight in the third one you might be confused because you would have thought that okay for uh, m uh, this is the third shell so two n square that means two into three square that is 18 so it can this shell can take up to a maximum of 18 electrons correct So you might want to put a 10 over here. Yes, absolutely. And I will explain you why that is, okay? So even though this shell has a capacity to take a total of 18 electrons, but the moment it achieves eight, right? It gets little stable, okay? it gets little stable. So it does not want to accept any more electrons after this. Okay. 
So we have two two caviars. What happened, caviar? Oh, okay. You are seeing the shared screen on one screen and. Uh, That's okay. Yeah. So what I was saying is why it does not take 18 instead it only takes eight and then two is because the moment, see electrons, uh, like I was telling you, there is a thing called Aufbau principle, AUF, BAU principle. And this is what is followed to fill up number of electrons in the particular uh, shells and shop shells. So we don't need to study this right now. That's why I'm not going too deep, too deep into this. I'm just telling you to believe me, okay? Even though it has a capacity of 18, it will not take, the moment it has filled eight, it will become a little stable. So when the next two electrons, there are still two more remaining, right? To fill up 20, there's two more remaining. So since it is a stable condition, it does not want to take two more electrons. So the two electrons go to the next uh, shell. Okay. Yes. Zinc. You do not need to draw the electronic configuration of zinc, but uh, zinc is 30, right? Yeah, so you will not have to draw the electronic configuration of 30. You consider electronic configuration up to this 20 itself. That's more than enough for you. Because what happens after the elements, see after the calcium, all these middle elements, what you see here, no? From yeah, all these middle elements, what you see from scandium to zinc, they do not follow a very straightforward method of uh, filling up the electrons, okay? Depending on what they are reacting with, they have different valencies. So you don't need to worry about how the electronic configuration is as of now for these elements. Electronic configuration, learn up to 20. Just know the atomic numbers up to 30. Electronic configuration up to 20 is more than enough for you. Okay. Because to fill up more electrons, no, like I said, I was talking about a principle, no, then you will have to learn the this thing, SP, SPD, then SP, DF. So this is the order in which the uh, electrons are filled, but this is not something part of your syllabus. You learn this only in plus two. So don't go there, no need to waste time with that for now. So just stick to this for now, up to 20 electronic configuration, you should. All right, so anyone else has any other questions from previous class? Okay. Okay, so before actually starting the first chapter, I have still not started the first chapter, I'm not talking anything specific about the chapters, chapter one. So I'm just, I was so far, I was just talking about the basics of chemistry here and there. So just to organize things a little bit, let's try to give you some summary of what we have seen. We know about atoms. All these atoms are here in this periodic table, right? And these atoms combine in certain numbers or ratios with either themselves or with other elements or other atoms, you know, right? Like hydrogen can combine with hydrogen and make your H2. What is this? It's a molecule, H2 molecule. Same way, this H, one more H and one oxygen, they combine together to form your H2O. 
right water again this is another molecule so atoms and molecules we know and i said that they combine with like hydrogen combining with this hydrogen hydrogen combining with uh, two hydrogens combining with the oxygen or if we take a simple example of a methane here you have this kind of bonding hydrogen combining with all these even you have nacl like your common salt sodium chloride sodium combines with chlorine so when i say combine that's a very very generic english word it's not scientific i'm not talking about science right now when i say just combine so when one atom joins with another atom what is it called that is called bonding right when one atom joins with another atom it makes a bond between them and this time what kind of bonds you have to learn you have to learn two types of bonding one is called ionic bonding and another one is called covalent bonding okay are you familiar with these two terms ionic bonding and covalent bonding has anyone heard of anything about this no okay but you are clear when when i say bond formation right there are two atoms like hydrogen and hydrogen they have a bond between them right okay so see hydrogen and hydrogen they also have a bond sodium and chlorine they also have a bond but there is a difference between the way in which these two bonds have taken place okay in case of hydrogen and hydrogen what happened how many electrons does hydrogen have one and the other hydrogen will also have one electron right both of them have one one electron now they have only one shell right what shell is it it's the k shell in k shell how many number of electrons is needed to make it stable yes it's k shell so it it can take up to a maximum of two only so when it gets two electrons it will become stable okay so when when this hydrogen was alone in the universe when this guy was alone in the universe it was not stable because it had a k shell and k shell gets happy only when it has two electrons but this hydrogen atom has only one so it was not happy it was not stable then there was another hydrogen atom this guy was also not happy it was also not stable and somehow because of some something happened near them some kind of motion they came very close to each other and they saw an opportunity to make a bond between them now there are two ways of making bonds like i said ionic bonds covalent bonds so the names are very may seem complicated but the idea behind them is so simple that you have this kind of thing in your school lunch also let's say i am saying this electrons think of electrons as your lunch box so you are one one person you have something in your lunch there is another person that person also also has something in your lunch in their lunch how many ways you can uh, share your lunch if this guy is a bully what he will do he will take your lunch and uh, eat up everything so this guy is having no lunch and this guy is having all the lunch this is one way of possibility right this is how one lunch can be shared one way of sharing lunch is that right or not does it happen in school it happens right yeah it used to happen in my school also there were some bullies they will go and take everybody's lunch oh your school doesn't happen okay oh yeah so you are missing these kind of things then all right so then there is some other civilized people very nice people okay i also have lunch you also have lunch okay we will share together 
right can happen nice people share so these are the only two way of sharing your lunch same thing happens with atoms also when they they have two options to make bonds they can either share the electrons or if one guy is bully or powerful that person will take all the electrons so whenever bond is formed by sharing if these are very nice people sharing so if bonds are formed by sharing that kind of bond is called covalent bond okay let me write with uh, yeah it's called covalent bond and if the bond is formed by people like my school then that is called ionic bond tell me you understand ionic bonds means what will happen let's get rid of this uh, lunch box analogy now let's talk about electrons ionic bond means electrons will be taken away by one person uh, one uh, atom and one one another atom will lose the electrons lose loss or gain of electrons for that an example will be nacl bonding formed between na and cl is type of ionic bond because what happens let me tell you that also what happens in nacl so let's see who's a bully over here who do you think was a bully make a guess sodium is a bully or chlorine is a bully who do you think okay okay let's do the uh, what is it called electronic configuration of sodium first what will be the electronic configuration of sodium yes absolutely right very good the electronic configuration of sodium is since the atomic number is 11 atomic number is 11 so it will be 2 comma 8 so 2 plus 8 will be 10 and plus 1 will be 11 2 comma 8 comma 1 so now let me let me draw that also let's say this is the sodium nuclei and i have a This is the first orbit, first shell, second shell, and third shell. So the first, so this is the nucleus. Okay. K shell has two electrons. One here. Let's say another one is sitting here. Position of electron. I'm just drawing randomly. don't think that it will be like opposite like that position of atom a position of electrons in atom is a very interesting topic actually you should study about this when you go to higher classes okay is it eight in the second one and the last one has only one electron Okay, now let's do the same thing for chlorine also. What's the atomic number of chlorine? Seventeen, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So what will be the electronic configuration? First one will take, of course, two. Second one will take eight. So two plus eight is ten already. What is remaining? Seven. So. let's say chlorine this is the center that means this is your nucleus and around it you have your orbits or the shells k shell l and m. okay yeah the first one will have only two electrons next one will have eight 
थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एंड एट एंड द लास्ट वन विल हैव सेवन वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स एंड सेवन नाउ लुक एट दिस सिचुएशन एंड रिमेंबर वेन एवर द आउटर मोस्ट शेल हैज एन ऑक्टेट so other than the first orbit the first k shell it will look for only two electrons but the rest of them if they get eight they are stable so eight is a very important number now what do you think chlorine if if chlorine takes one electron from sodium then it will be stable or should sodium take all the seven electrons from chlorine who do you think will be able, who will take what electron yes it's very simple calculation right it has seven electrons over here very very powerful seven electrons they will all pull this one also together in their orbit and this will become chlorine's thing and this guy will totally lose the electron now it does not have that outermost shell itself okay so this outermost shell is gone this electron goes to chlorine now over here so now chlorine has become stable because it has got eight sodium even though i said that chlorine is a bully and takes it but it's not like sodium is not happy sodium is also very happy why because this one electron is gone so what is remaining now for sodium it's 2,8 and the outermost shell is having eight electrons so this sodium also becomes happy means stable happy means stable does it make sense yeah so what i was saying it's a very simple logic chlorine has seven electrons so if it gets one electron from there then it will become stable and losing the electron sodium is happy and it becomes stable okay one minute guys chris can you hear me yeah uh chris if it's a different class going on right now so you can okay i'll do i'll do one thing i'll talk to you after some time okay so the class is about to get over in 5 minutes let's talk in 10 minutes okay yeah you can message me on in whatsapp yeah yeah okay so this is your ionic bonding now why is it called ionic there is a reason for that but uh, right now there is no point going into too much thing right now too much detail but since this is a recording i will just quickly tell you why it happens you can go through the recording whatever you understand it's okay if you don't understand also it's all right we will talk about this again in metals and non metals chapter okay ionic bonding we will talk about this in full detail in when we study the third chapter of chemistry so don't worry if you don't understand everything what i'm going to say right now okay so uh what happened here sodium had initially it had 11 electrons right Ele uh, total of 11 electrons and it will have total of 11 protons also correct number of protons and electrons is same in an atom everybody knows that so there are 11 protons and 11 electrons initially but after losing that one electron what will happen number of protons is going to be same 11 but number of electrons has become 
Is that correct or not? So what happens is, you know that the charge of one proton is positive charge. Protons are positively charged. You know that? Electrons are negatively charged. Everybody knows that? Okay, protons are positive, electrons are negative, and they have equal charge, equal to the charge of electron. Whatever charge electron has, protons have the same charge, but opposite. So, if there were 11 positive and 11 negative, they were just cancelling out each other. They were balancing each other. That's why there was a neutral charge overall. That's why all the atoms in the universe, they are neutral. They don't have any charge on them initially. But after this NaCl bond formation, what happened? One electron is lost by this sodium. So if, if this one electron is lost, what do you, do you think will happen to sodium? Will it be positively charged now or will it be negatively charged? What kind of charge? Yes, very good. Because one electron is missing. So 10 of the protons will balance 10 of electrons, but one proton will be extra. No? that will have an extra charge. So that amount of charge will be there on sodium now. So that's why Na becomes positively charged and it becomes an ion. Positive, positively charged ions are called, uh, positively charged atoms are called, not only positive, just if it is positive or negative. If it has a charge, we call it as ion. We don't call it as atom anymore. Okay, so Na becomes positive. Now, chlorine had taken electrons, extra electrons. Initially, it had 17, 17 protons and 17 electrons. But since it took one extra from there, now it became 18 electrons. And only 17 protons. So 17 protons will balance the 17 electrons, but one electron will be extra, right? And that, because of that, chlorine gets a negative charge one negative charge. So this is an ion, this is also an ion, and they have formed a bond, bond between them by uh, sodium has lost an electron, chlorine has gained an electron. That is why they form, the bond formed between them, you call that as ionic bond. Make sense to everyone? So the bond formed between NaCl is ionic bond. Covalent bond, like I said, ionic bond, we will study in more detail in metals and non-metals. Same way, we will learn about covalent bond in carbon chapter in more detail. Here, I'm just giving you a little bit high level idea that there are two ways of forming bonds as of now. One is by loss or gain of electrons, which is called ionic bond. And the other one, very, very nice way, disciplined way of sharing electrons. Why that happens, that also we will talk about in uh, those classes. When we study carbon or ionic bonds, we'll go into more detail why, why this kind of thing happens. Okay, so covalent bond happens by sharing of electrons and that, has, that happens in molecules like H2. So hydrogen molecule, when you have hydrogen and hydrogen or even methane, CH4. So these bonds are formed by sharing of, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, sharing of electrons with each other. Oxygen also, oxygen gas, what you have there also, bonds are formed by sharing of electrons between oxygen and oxygen. Chlorine gas, Cl2, they're also sharing of electrons. Covalent bond, okay? Fine. Now we understood that there are atoms and atoms on, it, on their own, they are not stable. They, they want to either react with themselves to make molecules like hydrogen on its own was not stable, but when it combined with other made a covalent bond and now it became a molecule. Now this molecule is stable. Okay, same way, they, they may not always react with themselves. They can react with some other molecules like carbon can react with more hydrogens and they can make methane, CH4, okay? Or sodium can react with chlorine and they can make sodium chloride. That is why we have tasty food. Otherwise, we would have not had it. How would the food taste without salt? So all these kind of bonding take place. And uh, whenever we have molecules, those molecules also react with each other and they form some chemical reactions. 
So there is one molecule reacts with another molecule and they give some more products, right? We can say reactants, reactant one, reactant two. I'm just talking about high level. We will talk about this in the next class where we'll, we will actually start the chapter one in the next class. That is tomorrow. We will actually start chapter one, which is chemical reactions and equations. So we have covered the basics. Now we will get into the actual deal of the first chapter in the next class. So like I said, chemical reaction, how does it take, take place? There will be some molecule here. There'll be some other molecule. They combine with each other to form some different products. Chemical reactions takes place. So the other thing you already know about, you have studied that in your uh, ninth standard also, right? You know about chemical reactions a little bit at least, no? Even if you don't know, it's all right. We will talk about it. Don't worry. So, from tomorrow onwards, we will go into the actual chapter, chapter one. All right. So, that's it for today. Uh, do you people have any questions? Which Something which you have from today's class, you can ask me right now. No? Okay. That's good. Then... Uh, We'll, I'll see you people tomorrow, 5.30. That's it for today, guys. See you all. Bye-bye.